G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a video made by a YouTuber called Casey Zander. Um, and this video was put up about a year ago, and the title of the video is called Never Live With A Woman, My Untold Nightmare of Female Nature. So I think this one, I think this guy, um, uh, he's in the manosphere, I guess. I, I've never heard of him, so I, I, I presume um, that he would be more targeted toward the younger guys. But I know I'll go have a few younger viewers, so some of this stuff might make sense to you. And I'm going to critique his story a little bit because I did I did watch it. Um, so I think this guy still has a little bit to learn uh, as well. But he's very successful. He's got half a million subscribers, so good on him. Never under any circumstances should you ever live with a woman. Okay? I'm telling you this from personal experience and stay tuned with me through this story because I very rarely, if ever, share legitimate personal stories okay, about my life. I'm going to say that again. If you are not married as a man, never under any circumstances ever, and I mean ever, live with a woman because you will see, okay, based on how society and how the world is set up, if things go south, you will see very, very quickly just how powerless you are. Okay. Years ago. Yeah, so that's that's really true, guys. I think before he starts, right? So I know a lot of these guys say never, never do this, never do that. I'm never going to tell you not to do anything. Um, but I think things to look out for. I think what a lot of younger guys do, or guys who are inexperienced with women, or maybe guys who just get swept up right in the feelings and don't think about the risks, like this, like this guy's done. Is and I've done this too, guys. Is you get the girlfriend, she seems perfect. You'd be going out three months, six months, a year. It's all perfect. Everything's awesome, right? You're getting all the action. Um, she's just all over you. It is double fisting, but he ain't all every night. Whatever you want, deep throat, it's on. She's cooking in meals. You're doing things for her. You're being awesome. You're taking her out. You go on her trips. You drive her around the countryside, all that sort of stuff. It's happy days, all right? And you guys go, wow, let's move in together. But little do you know that you're moving in and making a huge decision based on a version of someone and a version of yourself, that's probably not true to what both people are going to get, right? So you need to be careful that you don't make these huge decisions when you're caught up with a mind-clouding boners in your pants, guys. That's more or less what I'm trying to say here. Guys think they're going to move in with a girl and they're going to get sex on tap. You're not. It's just the reality of it's just nature. It's not that they do it on purpose or whatever it's just like it's just the way it goes mate it's like if you move in with a chick are you going to be uh you know doing all the thousand things you did before when you were trying to just get her on the hook probably not right so let's let's be real about it go one of my first girlfriends together um we were living together okay and this was something that i've never shared on this channel this is something that i've never shared with any of you um and it might be kind of hard for me to open up fully about this, so maybe give me 30 seconds to a minute to work my way into this. Okay, so one of my first girlfriends when we were together, we lived together for probably a year, year and a half, and based off of, you know, my personal taste in women and based off of, you know, her attitude and some of the things that I noticed, I clearly could see at a very, you know, short time that it was an absolutely crucial mistake that I made in my life. Okay. Now as a young man at the time in his early twenties, you don't know what you don't know. Very okay. True. So that's what you have to remember is for some of you who you're in this channel and you think, man, how, do, how does one get to the point where they, they have wisdom to share about men, masculinity, life, dating, women, leveling up, making money. Well, it's not only because I came from absolute rock bottom and was completely self-made, but every single issue you have ever ran into or seen with women, I have also seen. Because of that, I can get back at a higher level. Living with this girl, okay, there's certain behavior that I just don't like, you know, and like at night, I'm like, I'm laying down, I'm sleeping. She would always fall asleep before me, okay? She'd always fall asleep before me, and just because I have like, ADD or whatever, I'm an entrepreneur, it's hard for me to turn my brain off. I'm always thinking about business. I'm thinking about things I want to do. Yeah, I'm thinking about on, how man. I want to develop my life. It's just, it's hard for me to turn off. Legend. I am. It's a blessing because obviously I can get a hell of a lot of stuff done and Good I can on, stay man. real focused. But it's a curse because, well, everybody can like turn off. I have no off switch. That's I'm what a, sucks. I'm a, also this curse. She'd always fall asleep before me. And as she falls asleep before me, 
as her attitude would progressively get worse and worse through the relationship, meaning like I just who she was in the beginning was not who she turned out to be. And that typically happens the closer you get to a woman, you start to see that, yep. you know, the spark or the chemistry or what was in the beginning isn't what continues the more you invest as a man. And obviously I was invested because we were living together. I'd laid there at night and I'd look at it. That's her. right. That's what sort of chicks do. And that was my experience too, being a young guy. And young girls jump into it too. Um, very, very quickly without thinking, but they want to get you on the rental agreements together uh, or the bills together or um, all that sort of stuff. So you're fully locked in, right? And it's very hard to get out of that. You may as well be married. Like it's very difficult without having a huge blow up like this guy is probably going to have and tell us about. When you realize you've made a mistake. So what a lot of guys do, that is hang around, um, head in the sand. I did it, guys. Head in the sand um, and go, oh, well, I'm in here now. Better deal with this situation. It'll get better. It's just a bit of teething problems. She'll be right. She'll come good. But uh, as many of you guys will know, uh, that seldom happens. When she's sleeping and I think to myself, is this really the best I can do? Because if I look at the trajectory of my life right now, if this continues, I'm going to be with a woman who's average or slightly just above average, right? Nothing special. <laughs> okay, is this the best I can do with my circumstances? What a great bloke. What a great bloke. Circumstance, is this the best I want to settle for in my dating life? Is this the best I want to settle for in a relationship? Is this the best quality of women I could potentially obtain? as a young 20 something year old man, I laid down every single night and I'd, I'd look at her and I think about that. And after a month or two, I came to the conclusion that it was a no, there's no way I would settle or there is no way I would say, this is it. This is the best I can get. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. And there's a difference in mindset and mentality, but stay tuned. Cause the story gets whack. There's a difference in mindset between a man who knows deep down on a deep down level that he can generate options and one who can't, okay? And I think though, to be fair, a lot of men don't realize this until they actually have made something of themselves. And that's not when you're in your 20s, guys. I did quite well when I was in my 20s running around and womanizing and dating apps and bullshit like that as well, um, in between getting married and stuff and having girlfriends. But I always found it was difficult. It was a lot harder than when I came out of, um, you know, a separation and went into dating apps. And I was like, I was like, what's going on here? Like, I'm getting a lot of attention here. Like, this is like the, the the script has been flipped. So because I'd made something of myself, I had a good career and I kept myself in shape and I had the look that girls like, oh, I'm fortunate that I'm tall and, you know, all that sort of stuff, right? And... The mindset, it still was of, was of scarcity for quite a long time, guys. Like, it's just something that's ingrained to you that you sort of, you get one sort of hot chick. That's what I did. That's the mistake that I made. Like, similar, same thing to this guy. I was in my 20s. Um, we both latched onto each other, moved in, you know, thought we could, both, both probably thought we couldn't do better. And then that ended in tears, right? And so, so I think... A mindset of abundance, I don't think, comes to a man until he's just done a bit more with his life um, or just a bit older, a bit more wiser and knows how to navigate certain situations. And when I was a younger guy, I had no, I had no idea about any of this stuff. I didn't know anything. I was, I was like a kid walking around on the Monash freeway like with my hands out. I had no idea what was going on, just getting slightly missed by cars here and there, you know, like just avoiding catastrophe. So I think it's, yeah, it makes, it's a good point he raises, but, it, you know, you you don't know that what your future will look like as a man. Cause a lot of guys, they do, they cash their chips in early. Now I have a Rolodex of past women I've been with. That is, that are very Rolodex. attractive. Rolodex. And I don't forget about that. See, that's the thing is every micro success builds up. If any of you ever struggle with your confidence too, what I'd advise you to do is write down every amazing interaction you've ever had with a beautiful woman. Write, write them down so you can see, hey, here's proof. I am a cool guy or I am confident. Uh, okay, that's a bit weird. Confident. That's not something I've done, but what I can tell you is if you're a guy who struggles, <laughs> it would <laughs> definitely advice. help. Advice. But I would lay at night and I, I would remember the beautiful women I've been with or the amazing experiences I've shared with girls or 
the, the nights when you'd have natural, authentic, organic chemistry with women who are very attractive. And I just lay and I look and I think there's no way I'm going to settle for this. So why did so you buddy? One day I tried to, and, and here's the thing is every single day in my life, no matter what, I would always keep composure. Cause I believe that that is extremely important as a man. Never in my life have I ever raised my voice at a woman. Oh, yeah. Never in my life have I ever called a woman a mean name or oh, swore at her. Yeah. Never in my life have I ever went off on a, a tangent and text paragraph after paragraph. Never have I ever blown up and lost emotional control. Now, fuck, I have. <laughs> I'm sure all you guys have. So these guys who, yeah, I don't buy this stuff, but yep, yeah, let's see what he has to say. For some of you wondering how to keep attraction in a relationship, that definitely is a big component. When a woman sees a man is completely grounded and can't be moved ones. off center, extremely attractive. Here's another thing though that nobody tells you, especially in the online dating space, that scares the hell out of a woman. It scares the hell out of a woman because you have such a rock solid foundation. She wonders if you're ever going to be fully invested to the point where you will bend or break for her. See, since 99% of guys do that and operate that guy, operate that way when she sees a guy will never go weak for her or for her sex under any circumstances it scares them because they start to feel powerless okay this point in the relationship this woman could probably feel on some level that i was getting this vibe or i was wanting to dissolve things and not to mention this is going to sound cocky or this may sound arrogant your whole video has but keep going so they'll say this guy um i think his target market's like you know 15, 16, 18, 20 year old dudes. But I don't care because at the time, everything in my life was going up. I was lifting heavier weights in the gym than I ever have been before. Well, well done, mate. I was making more money than I ever have been before. Good I man. was gaining more, um, you know, I, I was having a bigger YouTube channel and a bigger fan base than I ever have before. Legend. Um, I was all of a sudden being connected with uh, well-known people. Right, and, and this girl would see this. So more or less, right? So I understand what he's saying. He says, don't don't hit your trailer to a chick too early. But he's more or less, if you think about it, what what a lot of these guys say is, you know, um, women are hypergamous and they jump around and all that. We all know that. It's human nature, right? It's female nature. We've all learned that. We've seen it. We've learned it firsthand. But he's doing that exact same thing to this chick, right? He's looking at her lying there in bed and thinking, oh, well, I'm making more money now and... Um, you know, hanging out with Instagram people, I'm really cool now and whatever. I'm going to get rid of her so I can go and slam a whole bunch of slurries in the back of the VN somewhere, right? That's what he wants to do. So it's not really congruent with what they teach, right? Because he's doing the exact same thing. And so I'm not having a go at this guy. I'm just like analyzing his story. So I was clearly on my way up. Right, I had all of a sudden I had multiple, you know, influencers with 500,000, a million followers that are in my contacts that we're having conversations on the phone. Legend. All of a sudden I'm connecting with other uh, either online business owners or entrepreneurs who are doing seven, eight figures per year. Like I was going up, okay? And it's because I put in a lot of work. Now, what happened when I explained that I want to dissolve the relationship or I don't think we should see each other or I think that. You know, and obviously I w I'm the man and I f was making far more money. I was the one majority paying for all of the expenses in the house. I wanted to dissolve the relationship. And when I did that, all hell broke loose. Now, I'm... All right, okay. So, yep, everyone has the right to do that. And good on him. He had the balls to do it. Because um, as I said, I didn't do it. And I knew um, back then that it wasn't so much I thought I was better than her. It just was like, nah, this chick's got, we got nothing really in common. But, you know... Anyway, put your head in the sand and f around and find out, right? That's what happens. But okay, I think you, you put put the shoe put the shoe on the other foot because that's what I like to do, guys. I like to be balanced. So he's come home or whatever, and he's gone and told his missus who's living with him, who's not expecting this to happen, that he wants her to get out of his house. Like, what do you think's going to happen? Well, the fucking whole house is going to break loose. I'm going to cut right here for a second and take a breath, so that way I can explain how I how this went down the right way. All right, so he's going to have a cut. He's going to have a sip of coffee. And while we're there, guys, so we're about halfway through the show. Um, 
If you're enjoying the content so far and you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Aiming for 7,000 subs, so your help is appreciated. And the best way to help me, guys, is just to watch the videos through to the end. Uh, that's what pushes me out and gets me out to more um, a wider audience on YouTube. And if you're interested, check out the Patreon link in the video description. But no pressure at all. Now, this was from many, many years ago, okay, which means I was in Arizona at the time, like this was so long ago, obviously, I'm not going to say who it was, I'm going to leave the name completely anonymous, because it doesn't matter who I was with at the time, you just have to understand the moral of this, like, you have to understand the, you have to understand the base of this story. That's the most important thing right now that I'm about to tell you. When I told her I wanted to dissolve the relationship, all hell broke loose on such a level that I have never seen, okay? We are talking hysterically crying, getting in my face, right? Swearing at me, threatening me, talking about what a piece of shit that I am, okay? <laughs> this woman's behavior is erratic, right? On her knees, dry heaving and hyperventilating. To the point where she took... Well done on the vetting process, mate. Like, you brought her in, dude. Like, that's on you a little bit, too. A iPhone cord charger. I had a 10-foot cord charger. She started wrapping it around oh. her neck. Started squeezing with it. Saying how she wanted to off herself right then and there. This is what I saw with my own two eyes. You can't make this up. So, what I start doing is I start... I start freaking out to some degree mentally because I'm like, I've never seen anything like this before. As you would. And I start taking every single sharp object out of the house. So I start taking all of the kitchen knives out of the house. I'm, I'm, my whole goal was I was going to put these in my car and I was going to either drive them to my parents' house or I was going to drive them to a friend's house or I was going to get rid of every single thing that could be harmful. And something happened that I'll never forget. As I'm packing up my car and as I'm packing up majority of anything that could be used that would be harmful she looked at me stopped crying for a second and she said these words she goes if you walk out that door and if you get in your truck right now and you leave I'm going to call the cops and I'm going to tell them that you hit me Ugh. I'm going to tell them that you hurt me. Now, I want this just... I want so this happened to my... The guy I talk about, Larry, in all my videos, right? My good friend. This happened to him. So his missus, they had the fight. Um, he found out she was cheating. Um, uh, and then she was trying to get him to hit her. Like, she was fighting him and getting in his face, you know, and hitting him and saying, come on, hit me, and all this sort of shit. And he didn't do it. He was too smart for that. But it's all about... The reason why they do those sort of things, guys, is... Um, they try to start a big fight is because they know if, if, if you hit them, game over for you. Like, they bend you over the barrel. They use the full force of law on you if they want to or they just, um, you know, extort you because you've done wrong. I want, I want this to sink in. And I don't I never support men hitting women or women hitting men or anybody hitting anybody. But I can understand why it happens. Like, you know, I can understand why get, women can push guys to a certain point doing certain things. I'm not saying do it. I'm not saying it's good, but I can understand it. I can understand it. Guys, you might not be able to have the restraint um, in a very high pressure, uh, tense situation. As you know, guys, girls can get right up in your shit. They can say the most vile, hateful, nastiest, cut, deep cutting things. So I understand why it happens. Because at the time, I can't express the amount of fear that I was in due to the fact of the blatant lie that just came out of this woman's mouth who supposedly loved me at all times and wanted the best for me. Never, never in my life would I ever lay a hand on a woman. I would never hit a woman. I would never hurt a woman. I mean, I would never even swear at a woman. I would, like, I have two sisters that are both younger. I'm obviously an emotionally stable individual where if something were to happen, even if I got cheated on, I don't think I would have that big of an outburst where I would just dissolve the relationship and I know that I can go back out in the world and generate options. And that doesn't come from me being cocky or arrogant. That just comes from knowing what to do and knowing how to navigate the world and be a, a man who can go out and get what he wants. So there's no way that a woman would ever move me off center to the point where I would ever lose control of my temper and do something like that. What just came out of her mouth was a blatant lie. And I was so fearful in that moment because I knew that I would be absolutely powerless. And what I mean by that is, let's say, you know, 
girl walks outside, it smacks her head against the brick wall on, on purpose, says, you know, th this happened to me, or he did this. Let's say it takes a frying pan, smacks herself in the face, like, you just, you don't know. And she was so confident, she was so calm, she was so composed when she said it, she was dead serious, and it was downright evil. Because never in my life would I ever do that, never in my life would I ever lay a hand on a woman. And I, and she knew I would never do that, but she just wanted to get at me so bad, it was like she wanted to well, completely feel that you have your dad every right to dissolve a relationship if I view that it doesn't suit me. That's right. Option A would have been easier. Option A would have been easy to say, you know what, this, she does have the power right now because I don't know what could happen if she did that. But I told myself, fuck that. I'm going to take a risk. And I'm going to leave anyways. And I looked at her and I said, if that's what you feel that you need to do, do it then. Do it. I'm out. Walk to my truck. Girl runs after me, clings on to my right leg, is holding me, will not let me get in my pickup. This went on for minutes okay. until she finally let go. I drove out of the house. I can't remember where I went. I can't remember if I went to my friends or what I did. And I'm not going to lie, when I was in my truck, I was very scared. I was actually crying. Right, I, I've never seen anything like this. I've never had my heart pump so fast. I've never had anybody threaten me in that manner. And it's so much different when a woman threatens you compared to when a man threatens you because you're powerless. You're powerless from a physical and from a mental standpoint. All you can use, all you can say is words, right, to a woman. All you can say is words. There's a couple options. Best things not to do, best things to say, no words. Like that's what that's what gets them, guys. They want you to say the words. They want to rile you up. They want you to fight. As they say, pigs love rolling in the mud and fighting. Women love fighting when it gets to that point. With your words, you can blow up and you can say, well, you know, get screwed or blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, you can also keep composure. But regardless, all you have is your verbals. Verbal jujitsu, I like to call it. That's all you got. This guy's doing verbal jujitsu. Let's try and fast forward a bit. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I love you if your woman has had multiple partners. Okay. I, at the time, I was dating a woman who had multiple partners. I also had multiple partners. Okay. I've probably not done things the best in my life. And that's obviously why I can even make a YouTube channel and talk like this for 16 minutes in a row by myself without any dialogue or anybody to talk with me to, because I've been through stuff. Okay. I've been through stuff. I've done real life things. I've seen how the real world works. And I have you been married and divorced, buddy? I don't think you have. So come and see me when you've done that. And hopefully you don't and don't go through that because that is the worst of the worst. So yeah, you've done some things. You've had a blow up with a girlfriend who was living with you. Challenging. You've had a domestic DV thing going on. You banged a few cheeky babes. You're sitting there in your robe like a legend. Good on you. And you've got half a million subs. You're a legend. And I say that a little bit in just guys, but he's done well. Like, good on him, dude. This guy's got like 500k subscribers. He's killing it. But I think... So let's, let's just recap his story, right? So guy has a girlfriend, gets her there, moves in. She's probably on his level. Like he's all right looking. He's not a super stunner or anything. He doesn't look like he's massively jacked or anything like that. Um, average sort of to me, a slightly above average looking guy. Um, well put together, smart, articulate. Gets a girl probably on his level. Um, moves in, realizes that Moving in with a chick, you know, isn't what you're sold. Fair enough. We all do. Starts getting successful and decides he wants to fuck her off. <laughs> then has a massive blow up over it um, with all the crazy stuff that happens at the back end. These young chicks, they are absolutely mental. So I knew this one girl and she had a bus up with her boyfriend and she drove around drunk um, to his house to and he because he went back to his parents. She drove, she drove to the parents. They drove a car on the nature strip and on the front yard and shit. Um, and then she went home, um, apparently the cops were chasing her in the car. Then she went home, got scissors and tried to, uh, off herself in the, um, in the bathroom. The cops had to kick the door down and shit. <laughs> like this shit happens. So I think it's a cautionary tale of who you let into your life. So once again, this is 
I'll tell you now, speaking from experience, guys, and I'll tell you, like I always say, I reckon one in a thousand chicks off a dating app is like actually long-term relationship, potentially wife material. One in a thousand, right? One in a thousand that you go on dates with. Moving in is probably up there. Probably one in 500. Like having a girlfriend that you move in with. Like think about how many people are out there that you meet that you're not compatible with or don't get on with. What people do, they rush in, they get in all the action. Guys are stupid. They get sucked in with the lovey-dovey stuff with the girl. The girl sells them a dream as well. You might sell her a dream. You move in, realize it's shit. So the, the ones where I've noticed where guys are actually successful, because people are successful guys. Not every relationship ends like this. Not everyone has bad experiences like myself and a lot of you other guys who watch. It's when people take the time to get to know each other and know each other over a number of years before they make these sort of commitments. They, they're the ones that, that, that tend to last higher percentage chance. Like I've, got, I've got a good group of friends. And the ones that, the majority of them that have long-term girlfriends that they've known for, had for a long time and then moved in with, and they got, they're all still together and they're happy. Well, happy from the outside, guys. Like, as I say, you never know what's going on in, behind closed doors. So people can can be happy, but in saying that too, these are things as a young man I think you really need to know. Oh, I'll give you my 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 tips, all right? For if you're going to move in with a chick, like I highly advise against it unless you've really vetted her out over about three years. I would say three years, like I'm talking, te- pressure tested that relationship, pressure cooked it, told her no, set boundaries, stood firm in your boundaries, whatever they may be. She has money. Right? She has money in the bank and no debt. I don't care if it's car debt, anything. She can't have debt, right? Money in the bank and earns a similar income to you. So if you're a doctor, she has to be a, something similar that generates a similar amount of money. That's just it. That's just it. That's how you protect yourself. Assets. If you've got a house, she's either got to have a large, large amount of cash or assets. That's it. You need to protect your ass. And people will say, oh, well, not many girls have that. Exactly. Right, exactly. So you don't want to bring rubbish into your life because the guys that I talk to you about, like Larry, my, my good friend, his wife couldn't even make a, a sandwich and put it in a bag. She's never worked before. She couldn't work in a cafe making coffees. You know, I think she started working now since their divorce. But she took him for everything he ever made. Really, like the guy's got a, a little bit of money in the bank and he rents a joint. You know, like after he had a house that he owned and paid for because he did this exact thing. He got the girl young, they moved in and he went through it. He never pulled the pin like this guy actually did. So props to this guy. He went through that and he got out of a hard situation. Anyway, guys, that's probably enough for me today. Um, but yeah, put your comments, experiences in the in the comments section for other guys to learn from if you've done it. Um, if you want to challenge anything I said, happy for you to do so in the comments, guys. I'll try and respond to everybody. Um, and guys, have a great day. Thank you very much for watching this far. Cheers.